internal communication is still debated. Uh, it's debated uh, uh, actually the uh, definition of internal communication. If you would ask today actually um, internal communication professionals, academics, what is internal communication, I'm sure we'll uh, find out quite uh, different um, answers, quite different definitions. Maybe for the beginning you can also ask yourself, what is uh, your definition of internal communication? Uh, in the meantime, uh, as we are still somehow uh, discussing about what all is internal communication, we are already uh, have a lot of challenges uh, like social uh, media. Because social media is here, our employees are using it, and so uh, we cannot uh, avoid it, so we have to use it. But in which way? Which is the right way? Is there a right way? So these are some of the things that we are going to discuss about today. And uh, I would like first to give the floor to Steve Daxwell, who is the president of FEA and also chief executive of British Internal Communication Institute. Institute. Uh, first of all, I would like you, Steve, to uh, tell us something about FEA. What is it? Uh, what it gives to the members? What are FEA activities? And of course, in, also in the second part, uh, we'll go into internal communication as, uh, as a profession. So, so how you see internal communication? Okay. Right. Hello, everybody. I'm delighted on behalf of FIRE. I'm delighted to be here in, uh, in Bucharest. This is FIRE's first project in, uh, in, in Romania, and uh, I hope it will be the first of many projects. So, the main theme today is about social media, but uh, before we introduce you to some specialists in social media, I'm going to put this into context. Um, I have bad news and good news. The bad news is that I'm not a social media expert, but the good news is that I do know something about internal communication, so that's where we'll start. Or rather, we'll start with FIRE. So FIRE is uh, a federation. It's a, an organisation of national communication associations. It was founded in 1955, so it's even older than I am. Um, it was founded because the national associations at that time wanted uh, a platform for cooperation between communicators across European boundaries. Our, our slogan, our mission, is connecting uh, Europe's communicators, or rather, it's connecting Europe's internal communicators. The national associations uh, across Europe uh, very often are um, associations of corporate communications. They have external as well as uh, internal interests. But some of the some of the organisations are mainly focused on internal communication. So fire for fire, internal communication is the main focus. Okay, so where are we and who are we? Quickly. Get all this together. These all the, these logos are the logos of oops, sorry, the logos of the individual national associations, from Portugal in the west up to uh, Denmark in the north, and across to um, um, to, to Austria, and also the, the Czech Republic in, in, in Central Europe. And the flags in between are countries which are not connected with fire but where we have, um, we have um, some informal contacts. So um, this is um, another map of Europe. Um, in the centre there, um, we are an outreach partner of the European Parliament. So we're not an institution of the European Union, but we have a relationship with the European Parliament and we're recognised as a, an outreach uh, partner. We have two forms of, of uh, membership. Uh, national associations are members of the federation, and we have individual participants in countries that um, are not in the federation. And we would like to think that um, uh, Romania will become part of uh, part of our um, area of um, of activity in in the future. But let's see how this afternoon goes first of all. 
Okay, so we communicate mainly through our websites. Uh, we have um, a, a fairly regular um, newsletter, and we produce uh, a review roughly every two years. And we are we have been fairly slow to get into social media, but we are taking our first steps in the social media uh, field as well. Our main activities are academy events, uh, one-day conference, half-day workshops, and we hold these in different countries around Europe. And we also have a very popular awards competition, the Grand Prix Awards. And these are our future um, ambitions. We, we want to create a, um, a, an online library for internal communicators and we, all, we want to work towards developing a professional um, development standard, a common standard for internal communication practice across Europe. And always, always, we look to expand, to expand the map to enlarge our to enlarge our federation. Okay. We're, we're not a commercial organisation. Everything we do is done by volunteers. No one has been paid to be here today. Uh, we give our time because we are committed to the idea of um, uh, cooperation among communicators across Europe. And for the national associations who are members of our federation, um, all of this costs the price of a cappuccino. It's, a, um, it's um, two and a half euros um, per, per, per member to be part of, of, um, of the FIRE Federation. Okay, so that's fire. So let's talk about internal communication. And I'm going to take this from a very basic level because I know that uh, not everyone understands the nature of internal communication. And this is how we see it. Okay, so essentially it's about communication within organisations from, from, from leaders to, to employees and vice versa, from employees back to leaders but also communication across the organisation, from peer to peer, between functions. And it's about all of this. It's about the processes, it's about the channels, um, it's about the organisational culture as well. Um, and increasingly, internal communication is about the management of change inside organisations, because you cannot achieve change unless you have effective internal communication. This is um, a point where some national associations have a different perspective on internal communication. Some, some of our national associations also recognise communication between members of organisations or between the residents of a residents association. They recognise that as also being internal communication. But mostly we see internal communication as being to do with um, employment between um, employees of an organisation. Okay, so this is a common question of PR, internal communication, what's the difference? And in fact, a few of us here today were in Slovenia last year and we took part in a, a PR academic conference where this was the, the key question. A lot of PR people don't see internal communication as anything different from any other form of communication. So if PR is public relations, relations with publics, in what way do internal publics differ? From a FIRE perspective, we would argue that <coughs> internal communication is distinct because it's about the management of people. It's to do with the relationship between an organisation and its employees. And as a consequence of that, the skills, the competence, the knowledge that internal communicators are required to have is also distinct. And this is, in a way, this is my, this is my image of um, what constitutes internal communication. Yeah, it's like a flower or the, the blades of a windmill. But internal communication draws from several other disciplines here. You can argue that there is nothing in internal communication which is unique 
that everything that an internal communication person does comes from HR, PR, journalism, organizational development, or, or change management. So that may be true, and we therefore argue that it's this configuration that makes internal communication distinct. It's where all of these disciplines meet in the middle. That's, it. That's internal communication. Okay, so point number four here. Ultimately, I, I say this is a theological question. It's like Catholics and Protestants and Orthodox. It's, it's the way we organize our religion. And ultimately, it doesn't really matter. Okay, what does matter though is what the internal communicator does and how that role is changing. These are some of the ways in which internal communicators have uh, practiced. At the back of the room, can, can you see, can you read the slide at the back? Henrik, can you, can you read this? Not clear? Okay. From the left to the right, uh, traditionally the internal communicator has been the internal editor, the, uh, the company newsman, and I say man because um, traditionally internal communication was a, 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 a male domain. I look across the room today and I see how much that has changed. So essentially the internal communicator has been a message maker inside the organisation, but over the last 15, 20 years that role has expanded project management skills of course. Um, uh, an agent of change. The facilitator of the corporate uh, conversation. So the idea here is that uh, the internal communicator is moving from being the manager and controller of communication to become a moderator and a facilitator to enable the corporate conversation to, 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 to flow effectively. Increasingly we're also seeing internal communicators being the, uh, a coach for, for executives and, and leaders, a communication coach. And we also had a role to play in, in uh, helping to uh, in, improve the, uh, the, the culture of the workplace. So we have this idea of the corporate culture <coughs> therapist. So we also talk in FIRE about internal communication as an emerging profession. All professions, law, medicine, uh, dentistry, all professions set standards, recognised standards of practice. So you see here, I have a selection of a range of different professions, uh, medicine, law, marketing, accountancy. And what they all have in common is that they, they all have um, uh, recognised standards. There is a career path, a qualification path that you have to follow to enter these, uh, the, these professions. You may recognise the uh, gentleman at the bottom of the screen. Barack Obama, was, uh, he, he taught law at the Chicago Law School before he entered into, uh, into city and then national politics. So, Barack Obama had to, had to meet uh, set standards and, and so should we as internal communicators. Okay, so if we are a profession, what exactly do we practice? At the foundation level, so in the first few years of practice, then we, we're required to, to practice, uh, um, uh, there's a range of things that we need to know and to do. And this, is, this, this comes from, um, from the British qualification for internal communication. This is, a, this is the, the set of skills and knowledge that we expect people to have at the foundation level of practice, between one and three years of practice in internal communication. And then at the advanced level... Oops, too far. Is that? Again another set of skills and knowledge, building on the, on the first set. So at, at this, um, I, I just go back, sorry. At the foundation level, the basics, understanding audiences, channel, the use of channels, design, photography, 
handling meetings, and then across um, team working, editing, all of the classic, all of the classic um, activities. And then moving on to the advanced level, um, being able to collaborate across functions. And collaboration skills are hugely important um, as you develop your <coughs> career in internal communication. Um, and having a, a much greater knowledge of the business environment, understanding the kind of behaviour which um, uh, is required to be successful in an organisation. So if professions set higher standards, the question is, how high should the standard be for internal communicators? Is it this high? Or this high? Or even this high? In the end, it's a decision that the internal communication community has to decide for itself. But it's very important that the standard is consistent and that, it's, that it is recognised by the workplace, the world of work, so that employers know what to expect when a person turns up for work as an internal communicator. So how high should we set the bar for our own emerging profession? So this leads on to the question of regulation. Should, should we as internal communicators have a licence to practice? And you could say um, yes, because we need to demonstrate that we have certain standards um, and that internal communication is too important to be left to anyone to go into an organisation without being able to demonstrate uh, a certain level of competence. Other people argue, no, internal communicators should not be licensed because there is something creative and entrepreneurial about internal communication. And if you try to regulate the practice, then um, you, you, um, you may damage the, the creativity and you may stop the entrepreneurial um, spirit. That's a debating point you may wish to uh, discuss later on. Okay, so where next? <coughs> We've talked about qualifications. Now, we, qualifications are coming. More and more of um, our member, member associations around Europe are introducing qualifications. And increasingly, we are starting to see employers who expect uh, candidates for internal communication jobs to have qualifications. Not just any qualifications, but internal communication qualifications. And we think that um, the recruitment companies, when they advertise jobs, increasingly will put um, internal communication qualifications into the, uh, the, the specification for the job. We think there will continue to be this uh, love triangle um, for internal communication between HR and PR. Where should internal communication fit? Of course, um, there are still publications, there are still printed magazines and newspapers, and long may they, long may they continue. But in relative terms, we are seeing a, a decline, historically, in the number of pure publications, and a, a corresponding growth in a different kind of dialogue, a dialogue that's enabled by social networks. And the rest of this workshop today will be devoted to discussing that in more practical detail. And we are starting to see the rise of a job title that's usually called the community manager. And this is the person who is responsible for managing the social networks to, in to introduce them into an organisation to develop the strategy for social media in a corporate um, um, environment. <coughs> I'll leave you with a couple of points for reflection. Um, FIRE is a European federation, so our focus is continental within Europe. The, the question, you may, question you may consider, um, how much influence do um, corporate culture, national culture, or a European identity, how much influence do these dimensions have on the practice of internal communication. Is there a European way of doing internal communication? Is there a Romanian way or a British way? And the second question which follows that is 
we're, we're now in a world of globalisation. And so maybe corporate, national and European don't matter anymore. But does does globalisation sweep all of those differences away? That's another question for you to consider. Okay, so within FIRE we've learnt many ways to say thank you and uh, this week we've learnt one more, so we'll talk next. Thank you very much.